The next delegation is uh, Jeff Lowe on behalf of Choices. Good morning, Madam Mayor, Mr. Speaker, Councillors, uh, Madam Clerk. Uh, the financial figures that I'm going to be citing in the presentation that I'm about to give are taken from Schedule A of the budget synopsis that's provided as an attachment to the agenda of this morning's meeting. The members of Mayor Thompson's hand-picked Executive Policy Committee are all long-serving veterans of City Council. For years, they've been obsessed with prodding transit to improve its financial bottom line. Nothing else seemed to matter to them. 1997 turned out to be a breakthrough year for transit. Ridership went up so much that $1.2 million more than had been anticipated was collected through the fare box. You'd have thought EPC would have been thrilled. You'd have thought they'd have wanted to give transit a pat on the back and reward it for a job well done. But not only didn't they permit transit to partake of the fruits of its own accomplishment, they went beyond that, even confiscating $600,000 that was realized on a one-time basis through the sell-off of handy transit vans to private contractors. When the city's 1998 operating estimates were approved in principle a year ago, council went along with a recommendation from EPC to abolish the discount cash fare. Last month, however, Public Works Committee responding to a deafening public outcry passed a motion to reverse that decision by a vote of three to one. Their vote recognized the fundamental abusiveness of what has been done. That transit took in $1.2 million in excess of what it required to fund its operations last year suggested that fare levels should remain untouched. Instead, they were increased as of January 1st, 1998. With fares unnecessarily set at these new higher levels, <coughs> transit is projecting an operating surplus of $463,500 during the year now in progress. So what has been EPC's response to this information? The great bus robbery, the incriminating details of which caper, can be found on page six of Schedule A of the synopsis of the EEC approved revised 1998 current estimates. More specifically, the taxpayer supported contribution, which is termed the transit fund deficit, so-called, is shown declining by $1.8 million from $27,421,000 down to $25,653,000 from what was provided in 1997. Increased net revenues in the transit utility, quote unquote, are shown as offset by a reduction to the taxpayer supported component by a commensurate amount. In total, it is proposed that $5 million more be raised from the ridership through the fare box than was the case last year. Evidently suspecting that the public, particularly with the civic election looming, would disapprove, EPC has sought to conceal its intentions. To keep the lid on their cover-up, they have wangled a budget document out of their financial advisors that indulges in certain shifty bookkeeping maneuvers that can be labeled disreputable. Witnessing the lengths the members of Executive Policy Committee have gone to to prevent Winnipeg Transit from consolidating financial and ridership gains it has won, it is difficult to avoid drawing the conclusion that their actions are prompted by a viciously ideological ambition to see our public transit system undermined to the point of collapse. One must also wonder whether they mightn't harbor some primal animosity toward transit and its users. How many of them ride the bus with any regularity? How many of them have ever set foot on one? Are they bent upon waging class warfare on transit goers? It is with these considerations in mind that we exhort non-members of Executive Policy Committee to repudiate that clique and vote both to reinstate the discount cash fare 
and roll back fares generally to the levels that were in force in 1997. If EPC persists in arguing that you'll have to find an additional $750,000 to replace the funds that would be needed to revive discount cash fares, we advise you to just fling that red herring back in their face. EPC wants to pilfer $1,800,000 that rightfully belongs to Transit and its clients. The onus is entirely on EPC itself to put it back where they found it. In the end, hopefully, too, the councillors who serve on EPC may yet fear the wrath of their electors or develop a conscience, and likewise vote to do the sane and the decent and the productive and the honorable thing. And please, councillors, think carefully about the effect that what you're having is doing. We're not talking about some philosophical abstraction here. We're talking about the real lives of real flesh and blood people who are already suffering enough. Uh, th this is hurting people who are already hurting, who are already reeling. This is causing real bleeding. So please, think about what you're doing and change course. Thank you. Thank you.